Underwater is probably the last place you'd want to be during the Mesozoic era, where gigantic predators search the seas for unsuspecting prey. I've been a fan of deep sea life forever. I literally just did a review of a great white shark movie I loved called The Shallows over on Dragon Curve, and found this scientific article on prehistoric fossils that had their heads torn off from other animals. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about a recent study involving these reptiles from the Triassic. This is something that goes over the hunting behavior of aquatic predators and how they have actually subdued their prey animals like Tanistrophius, which is one of the classic Jurassic Park creatures that I'm sure a lot of you may remember from way back in the day. This is some of the most brutal and insane paleontological news in regards to this little time period and aquatic life surrounding it that I've seen in a while and I thought it would be fun to go over, especially in relation for what it could mean for a future Jurassic movie. Now the information that I'm going to be going over today comes from two science-based articles, but mainly the first one. It begins with the headline, Bite Marks on Triassic Fossils Show Signs of Bloody Dino Decapitation. Aquatic dinosaurs evolved long, inflexible necks, an asset for foraging, but also a liability. Now right off the bat, I'm sure there there's a million people screaming that these kinds of creatures were not technically dinosaurs. But look guys, we've had enough educational lessons on that in videos before in the past to not just roll our eyes at and continue. So getting down to the point of the news, it would appear that some recent paleontological findings have suggested that Tanistrophias had their heads bitten off during an underwater attack. Clean off, in fact, which means that the method in which they were hunted by other creatures was uh, pretty intense, to say the least. So massive extinction of from around 250 million years ago are cited here. And yeah, it was a rough life back then with creatures dying off and coming into survival all over the place in a very harsh environment, which sets the stage for what kind of brutal world they really lived in. But the article goes on to state that one archosaur, Tanistrophius, an ancient water-dwelling reptile with a wildly long and skinny neck, used their tiny skulls and inflexible necks to prowl the seas for food, some of them feeding on fish and squid, or even soft off-shelled animals, but some newer research has indicated that this bizarre and eerie-looking creature may have also had its neck used as a terrible liability to aggressive competition in their environment. To quote the article, paleontologists speculated that these long necks formed an obvious weak spot for predation, as was already vividly depicted almost 200 years ago in a famous painting by Henry de la Beche from 1830, which I gotta say I remember seeing this a lot as a kid. I always thought this old Old school prehistoric creature rendition and others like it from the 1800s were seriously cool. In fact, it's making me think about Michael Crichton's uh, often forgotten dinosaur novel Dragon Teeth set during the Bone Wars. It came out around the 20th anniversary of the Lost World movie a few years back. But anyways, back to the quote, nevertheless, there was no evidence of decapitation he's talking about back then or any other sort of attack targeting the neck known from the abundant fossil record of long-necked marine reptiles until our present study on these two specimens of Tanistrophius. Inspection of a couple of fossils from two distinct tannies revealed clear evidence of snapped necks with bite marks right around the snapping point. It looks like the skulls and necks of these animals were well preserved and undisturbed, while the rest of their bodies were nowhere to be found. Painting a picture of a Tanistrophius combing the water for food when all all of a sudden, an aggressive animal comes out of nowhere, severs its neck from the body in a pretty unfortunate method of attack, and ends the battle quickly before leaving the rest of the creature open for a very good meal. Now before I go any further, I want to bring up the kind of environment that Tanistrophius lived in just for good fun. To my knowledge, no specific culprit is named in this article, and I can't really find any other info on what did this attack specifically, but a quick brush up on the habitats of Tanistrophius shows that the following creatures may have been responsible. Paranothosaurus giganteus, which is extremely interesting because we just got done talking about some of these guys in relation to the Jurassic Park franchise recently. And then there's Simbospondylus and Helveticosaurus, which itself looks particularly bizarre. The article goes on to talk about the fossils by stating, the fact that the head and neck are so undisturbed suggests that when they reach the place of their final burial, the bones
bones were still covered by soft tissues like muscles and skin. Taken together, these factors make it most likely that both individuals were decapitated during the hunt and not scavenged, although scavenging can never be fully excluded in fossils that are this old. The other article from Discover gives another similar account on what is believed to have happened, with a subheading that states around 240 million years ago, evolution backfired in spectacular fashion as predators decapitated strange-looking reptiles. Of course, the implication being that these especially designed necks used to help the animals survive ultimately became their downfall during hunts that resulted in them literally losing their heads. Now, what I think makes the Tanistrophius findings uh, so interesting is the fact that if this theory winds up being true, you know, the way in which they were killed, if that winds up being accurate, it paints a very harsh and violent picture of what life really would have been like for these things all those years ago. Tanistrophius is an incredible animal that I always thought would be perfect for a Jurassic movie. And since it's never shown up, I think a water-based film with something of an aquatic resort, almost like the research base in Deep Blue Sea, would make for a very fun idea. Chris Pratt even entertained the idea of a Mosasaurus-specific movie a few months back, which you can check the whole video I did on it from back then. Tanistrophius is a very elegant-looking creature, and it could come up on land, which would make for some even more interesting scenes, especially involving other Jurassic Park creatures like Compsognathus or Velociraptor. But what I'm really getting at is a story set with maybe four or five new aquatic animals with a couple that we'd already seen before in the past thrown back into the series. Animals like Mosasaurus and Spinosaurus swimming alongside Tannies, Helveticosaurs, Nothosaurs, and even Ichthyosaurs. Little operational pools like what we see from the movie The Abyss, complete with a tone that is dark and eerie, where one of these things can just end another animal at a moment's notice. That to me sounds like a seriously cool idea, and I'm shocked Jurassic Park has never done that before. When it comes to the paleontological findings surrounding these fossils, though, I think it just paints a very dark picture. I mean, animal life in the wild is always going to be serious and uh, dependent on survival of the actual capabilities and physical attributes of these animals and their behaviors. So to have a Tanistrophius looking for food in some sort of crevice underwater, only to get ambushed and killed instantaneously by a larger, more aggressive creature, that's very cool. It's very wild, and it does paint a very prehistoric picture. And I think this paleontological evidence is intriguing, to say the least. But anyways, guys, these are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter, and I want to know, what do all of you think about this research, and are you convinced that this is how the Tanistrophius died all those years ago? Do you think a scene like this would make for a good Jurassic movie? And what kinds of aquatic reptiles or dinosaurs would you want to learn more about in the future? Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be on these fossils and the research done around them, I'd love to hear all about it in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I want to thank everyone that's helped me build my channel over the years. I'd also like to thank every one of you guys who've watched my stuff. You've all been extremely cool to me. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and hope that you'll consider subscribing. God bless you all. Christ is King. See you guys in the next video. And as always, take it easy.